We are, we're on. <laughs> All right, here we are. This is, uh, uh, we're back, pretty much where we left off. And I don't know if this is going to be practical at all. The layout that I have here right now is just like wires all over the place, so all in the way. Uh, I don't know if this is working right. Well, Welcome everybody. Yeah, that will do. Uh, this is exactly where we left off, except I've done some um, some major surgery behind the scenes, and I have no idea if it's going to work yet. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so. Um, working away on a little bit of um, a rabbit hole, as always. Um, so, I guess I should explain the rabbit hole. Yeah. Oops. Oh yeah, let's zoom out. Um, the machine that we're pairing this from is this little Google-based uh, Raspberry Pi-style thing running their flavor of Debian called Mendel. And uh, last time I logged into it, it was refusing to connect to the Wi-Fi and I couldn't figure out why. And so I thought, well, let's do an upgrade. And then I went to the page for the upgrade instructions and they said, Sorry, you can't use app get update because we messed up. Instead, we recommend you reflash the whole machine. So I did that. Luckily, the user directory is all on a, um, an SD card. And all of my shenanigans last time with the SD card flaking out, I think were actually just physical, that I literally dislodged it while I was messing around with cables. But anyway, so I, I took the little machine home. I left the terminal in the office and I took the, the computer home, this little device, and reflashed it. And so I've just wired it back up. Um, if you are eagle eyed, you will notice there's two. Um, oh, can I do this? Uh, yes. Uh, there's two. Two USB dongle things out the back of it. Um, one is to uh, the next terminal I'm going to attach because one is not good enough, uh, and that's using this StarTech uh, USB adapter. I haven't got it to recognize it yet. And then the other is this little white one that goes to this little homebrew piece of electronics that connects to the teletype. So. Uh, yeah, we're literally at the stage of just plugging everything back together. And, um, and here we have a successful itch message that says um, uh, you're almost logged in. Um, I don't have a Getty uh, with auto login, I just have a Getty with um, like the default. I set up a Getty on the port and now it's listening. But I don't actually want to just yet. So instead, I'm going to go down to the web page here on GitHub and follow the Raspberry Pi instructions again and um, take this thing here. And uh, if I can, connect to this machine over the Wi Fi from a little serial terminal. Although that seems to be unresponsive now. 
uh, and I don't know why. And if it's unresponsive, then I'm, I'm sadly out of luck. But this is, I guess, what happens when you have, like, all sorts of flakiness around here. I could just log in. So the machine is more or less back up and running. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the thing. So, okay, we're, we're back here. I can't seem to connect to it off of the, uh, off the Wi-Fi again. Like, everything, you, you go one step forward and two steps back. <laughs> so. And sure enough, it's not actually connected on the Wi-Fi. Please make sure you have an internet connection. Okay, well, okay, let's restart. So we'll, we'll restart. It'll probably spin up a Getty back onto this device uh, when it gets itself back on. I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, I do need remote access to set up the auto login for the Getty. And I also need internet access to do some of the things that I really wanted to do today. And this is taking a quite a while to restart, which is interesting. Oh, the other the other notable thing is I don't have a spare USB port to plug in like the actual serial console, unless I unplug a camera. <laughs> so uh, let me add that to my shopping list. The thing I need to add to my shopping list is. A USB hub. Something fast and small and convenient uh, so that so that I can plug in the serial console when things like this happen. Kill the power to the device, right? Hit the big red button. Boom. I'm not going to unplug the power to the uh, USB interface because there's no need, but I'll unplug power to the device. Spin up the host again. All right. The light is on. The fan's whirring. Do I get a login? And then the next question after do I get a login is, can I see this thing on the local network? And I think the answer to both of those is no, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> Oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> All right. Well, the easy solution, I think, is to um, take away. The camera. This one. Blink. There it went. It's gone. And instead, plug in the serial console. So 
see if that spun up on my Mac on my local book here, and it did. And it's cu dot whatever for some reason. Uh, and I have screen on it. And let's see if screen gives me anything to wake up from. Actually, maybe this was in the wrong order. Maybe I should have, like... Killed that thing. Yeah. Sorry, this is kind of a slow afternoon here. I thought, like, I had a chance that everything was just going to work nicely, and... It is not that day. <laughs> okay. So I have this slab USB to UART, and I can screen to it, except it couldn't. Okay. previous version of screen is still running. And here, what's happened on this? You're not looking at the same window that I'm looking at. There we are. All right, we are on screen. Now that's just power. And there's no messages. There's no messages. It's not even good. What terrible craziness is this? Okay. Well, this is the least interesting thing to be watching ever. Oh yeah, I've unplugged the serial terminal <coughs> uh, driver, and so now it's like chattering because the line is on and break. The line is wide open. If I plug in power to the serial thing, then it's got a loop, and the loop tells it uh, that there's no data. But the current's flowing now. The, the loop current of driving the, the serial thing. All right. Where do we stand? Where do we stand? I have uh, power, and the power is just fine. Then I have a thingy USB, and that's okay. And then I have the right lights are on that show me that, that my screen thing ought to be uh, ought to be active and that is And screen is not running anymore. And I'm gonna go screen after killing the various things. I'm gonna screen to this one one five two hundred, and there it is. Plug in the power, and I should see all the boot messages. And I am seeing no such thing. There's not even like U boot. This is the console. Well, that is really weird. Okay. I broke it.
I mean, it normally takes like a tenth of a second for, for getting the U-boot messages on here. And then it'll pause a little, and then it'll go straight into units. And there's nothing. Did I fry it or something stupid? There's nothing. Okay, well, screen is gone. Let's plug in the other connection, which should be this, like, network serial thing. if I can connect there. This is USB modem Coral 1. That seems like a useful thing. And the, um, the network says it's connected on um, 192.168.100.93. Oops. And uh, this window's a little bit big, you can't see the bottom of it. Okay. The machine's up. Okay, it's working. It's kind of working. Okay, I'm going to turn this off while I just go mess with my uh, SSH config. I'm in. Well, that's very weird. I think I'm exactly where I used to be last week. Of like no internet. Oh no, I'm on. I'm on the internet. Okay. All right. Well, I'm here. Who's here? Just me. I'm logged in over this serial thing to the machine. What happened to the Getty? I thought I had a Getty. Well, I do, I got a Getty. And there it is. Oh! No, that's okay. Does the. It's owned by root. And it's dial out. I think that's okay. Ah, I know what it was. It was simply that I did not enable the Getty to start at boot. Which is kind of the obvious thing. I did the very next thing above it in my in my getting started list. And I didn't do the restart it at loot at, at root. So now if I say uh, okay, let's restart. Ka ching And I should get myself a, a Getty. Come on. <laughs> Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. And there we are. We are getting there. Okay. Okay. I don't want to log in from here directly. I'm still going to mess around on the, the soft terminal. Because why not? 
uh, so on the soft terminal, I want to say, uh, let's be root for this. I'm going to make a directory for the Getty service override, and I'm going to edit this file here, and I'm going to drop into it this. And I want to auto log in with ASR33. Okay, and it's on TTY ACM0, and the terminal type is TTY33, because I'm just going to use the default for now. And let's see what happens. We're automatically logged in. Okay, we are. Yay, wonderful. Now, getting the basics. We're on the internet. We're logged in. Uh, I can now go do actually productive things on this. All right, here we are again. Ah, that'll take one. Every darn time, every darn time I could get. <laughs> like there is a quiet option on here, dash Q, and it'll stop all of this like messaging shenanigans. But well, what can you do? Yeah. Okay. Um, several things that I want to try here. Um, first of all, after just like rebuilding the whole OS, it's not obvious um, it's not really obvious if I broke anything, and I'm sure I broke things. I like to be able to see the print head bounce up and down a little, so that'll, that'll do nicely. Um, yeah. Oh no. Oh no, I have a, I have a merge conflict. Oh no. <laughs> yes, it is. Don't tell me I'm not functional. Quite functional enough, thank you. I just want to see the differences. <laughs> All right. And... Oh, that's very boring. Oh, no, okay. It's just a remark. Oh, no, I've got the whole thing. Right. So this is actually the next subject of interest, I think. Um, what's the difference? Is there a significant difference? Oh yeah, there's no significant difference. All right. Oh yeah, I think I can throw away my local changes and just pull whatever the changes were from, from the hub. The first, the first thing is there's a single quote versus a double quote. 
this um, this mids versus array indexing thing. So I should explain what all of this is. the thing that this is, is, uh, is printing a Mandelbrot set. I'm just trying to keep up with everybody else who has teletypes on the internet, because everybody's um, doing Mandelbrot sets, and it's my turn. <laughs> so I didn't write this code from scratch, I googled for a basic version of Mandelbrot. Um, I, I looked at uh, uh, I looked at Eric F's Mandelbro printout from uh, from the ones that he's been producing, and I tried to get it working, and um, it didn't. <laughs> and I couldn't work out why. It was like some weird basic kind of syntaxy thing. Um, I found this other one that was easier for me to understand um, and worked pretty much first time and is really easy to tweak and then I kind of built a variation on it and the variation on it was to print uh, by density to print from the ASCII table so that low density ones are at the beginning they're like a, a negative and a basically get darker as you go to the right and and so those characters are uh, like an ordered sequence of the iteration count that we're going to print um, so then I tried running it um, and of course Raspberry Pi style machines this one this Google machine didn't come with basic and so I had to scout around and I think there's BC basic um, BS basic, what's it called? Uh, there's a basic, BW basic, the Bywater basic interpreter. And so BW basic should work. Let's, uh, let's try it and see. So this seemed like a decent version of BASIC. And I just installed it. And um, yeah. Let's see if it works. I think it's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working really well. Now it's printing super fast. If you go watch Eric's thing, hey Russ, uh, if you watch the version that, that Eric prints, it has this really nice feature where it slows down in the middle of the line, and when it starts to print like spaces, then um, the spaces go like super slowly, and that's because it's actually a slow computer that's running it, um, because he runs his off a inside an 8080 machine. But this is running off a Google supercomputer, so it's fast enough to, it's faster than the printer. Uh, yay! And this is a man of birth fractal. And it's working great. And yeah, so we've got a few of these to do. But I, I, I'm going to like 
clear up the code and talk about it, I think, next. Um, yeah, it's working. A PDP-8, a PDP-8 kit, oh, a PIDP-8, yeah, I've seen pictures of them with the Raspberry Pi uh, running a PDP emulator and physically nice hardware, yeah, they look really beautiful, really, really beautiful. That'll do. Bear with me one second. <laughs> Let's see. I can tweet that. There we go. Yeah, Pidey P8. That's kind of cool. I like the look of them. Um, at some point, I'll find myself actually playing with old, really old hardware. Um, most of it, of course, is emulation, even even if the front panel is physical. <coughs> He's seeing the moon lander running on a HP calculator. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I remember playing moon lander games on a variety of old machines, but I can't remember what machines they were. And it was after 1972 sometime. <laughs> All right. Uh, this let me let me dig in. I want to do a little bit more basic experiment on the on the Mandelbrot set. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's see. With the printout, one of the things we can do with the printout is we can look at the whole thing at once. And uh, up at the top, it, I'm just going to read the code of this and see if I can describe what it does. It says. The X C the C string that's um, oh yeah no 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 problem thanks for hanging out um, give us an update on the wheel writer too that'd be awesome um, yeah so for 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 the for the remaining zero of my stream watches <laughs> I'm going to read this code and. Um, and explain how it works because then I'm going to go edit it and this is going to be the test of my editor because I don't yet know if the editor was messed up still based on my complete rebuild of the machine. I mean I rebuilt the OS from ground up so we'll see. <laughs> 
So let's look at the code. It says that here's this string which is like basically all the some of the printable characters, but organized so that the light ones are at the beginning and the heavy ones are in, they're at the end, so that I get like a grayscale. And you can kind of see that in the picture. Gray, the dark ones are in the middle, and except for the void, and the light ones are on the outside. So that's the intention. Um, scroll back off the top of the screen. Where's my scroll back button? My up arrow. There we are. That's the up arrow. Um, so x1 is how many uh, points across, and then y1 is how many points down. So that's rows and columns, or columns and rows. Then the i1 and i2 are vertically, watch the kind of coordinates that this is going to work across. And then r1 and r2 are the horizontal coordinates. And basically it says, let's loop through all of the, all of the columns. And that's the for y equals 0 to y1 is doing all the rows. And then the for x is 0 to x1 is doing all of the columns. And then basically this for loop for, for n equals 1 here, it says, let's, let's loop up to like however many characters this is, like 30 or 40. And for each time of the round the loop, we're going to do this little iteration of a and b. And if a plus b is greater than 4, then jump out. And say uh, we have escaped from iterating, right? We've added, we, we've done this little kind of piece of multiplication, add and subtract uh, that's on lines two, 200 and 210, and we've escaped. And so when we've escaped, we just counted how many times we had to go around the loop, and that's n. And then in line 240, it says print the nth character out of that string. So. Now, what if it doesn't escape from this little equation? Well, eventually, it'll fall off the end in line 220. It'll just say, like, line 230. We've, we've done all the characters. And in that case, let's take the space at the very end of the list of characters and print that instead. So the loop turns out that it doesn't really converge inside of this strange region. And this strange an edge on it that is fractal, and that's the Mandelbrot set. So what I'm going to do is actually edit the code and edit those coordinates. Let's try it. Okay. My editor is not behaving properly in exactly the same way that it was not behaving properly before. Okay. Let's try to debug that. Uh, on here, I'm going to do this from here because it should be easier. My theory is. This has some weird settings, and that some of them are undesirable. And do I remember which ones? No. Let's uh, go back in there. So let's have a look. Speed 9600, that's fine. Rows 24, columns 80, that's, um, that's slightly wrong. Because it should be columns 72, rows 0. Okay. So, we can fix that. No, really? Oh. I remember how to actually connect to this thing. There we are. 
Right. Uh, print them all for the device of uh, dev ttycm0, which is the thing it's on. Speed 9600, rows 24, columns 80. Okay. Now, I don't want a discard character, but I don't care. Do I care about these? Switch, start and stop. So I've got uh, X on, X off, flow control. Uh, interrupt and quit. Those are all fine, I think. Discard. W arrays and reprint. This one sounds like really dodgy to me. I don't know what it is, but I want it gone. When specifying an output style, modes may not be set. Let's try that. Okay. Maybe it's just that. Okay. Oops. Let's print them all again. Uh, reprint is undefined. Yeah, let's have a look to make sure it says what it says. Um, do I want a word erase? No. Do I... Uh, will redraw the current line, and maybe that's been messing with my editor. Who knows? So I didn't want that, for sure. Do I want W erase? No. Nope, no thanks, nothing fancy. Do I want discard? Nope. Uh, min and time. What's min? Min. min. N characters minimum for a completed read. Okay, I don't care. No weird stuff here. Uh, hop on close, C read. All of this seems just okay, I think. Uh, as far as I can guess. But let's try. See if it made any difference. No. Didn't make any difference. Well, that's weird. There's something odd. The other symptom that I had was this LS was doing strange things, and LS is still doing strange things. Oh, this is because my my line length is 80. I bet this is because my line... I think my, my lines and columns, and maybe even if I get rid of the columns thing. Oh, something weird. All right. again. No, it's weird in a different way. And it's still broken. It's just weird and different.
and completely broken. <laughs> Hi Uzi Monkey, I haven't seen a print head like that before. My father used to have a typewriter repair business and the IBM's had this cool golf ball type print head and this one's cylindrical. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the golf ball-y things where this electric and, uh, and this is not. Uh, let me zoom it for you. So this is, yeah, this is a teletype model 33 and the print head is cylindrical. Yeah, um, and it's still noisy. It's actually way noisier than the than the golf balls because of the. I mean, on the golf balls, as I remember, the print head is super light. It's like thin aluminum or something, or thin steel maybe, um, but it doesn't weigh anything. This one here, I think, is chunkier. It's like solid, and this this little thing is the is the. Uh, or whatever it's called, the hammer. <laughs> and, uh, and as you can see, it bashes against it. Yeah, and and exactly, it spins in the kind of similar way to the golf ball, but the golf ball I think had more of a swivelly action. This goes up and down. And uh, so it just goes vertically up and down, and uh, and it doesn't swivel in the same way that the golf ball does. The other thing that I think is easier about this is um, it only has uppercase characters, so there's no need for anything on lowercase, and that means it's smaller. Yeah, yeah, me even some kind of magic. All right, so there's three of me logged into this thing. All right, now if my editor is kind of busted, I'm going to have to do some little edits in. Um, uh, in the terminal here, I do want to do some more. Um, some more of that Mandelbrot set because it it looks really cool, and I want to experiment with coordinates. Um, but I think we're going to have to. Uh, go experiment directly. So the first thing I think is I want to go from negative 1.6 to 0 and I want to go from negative 2 to 0 instead of symmetrical about or more or less symmetrical around the axis. I would fire up the D except it doesn't work. <laughs> I mean it does work but it, it has this really annoying thing um, and I, I, I don't know what's broken. I think it, I thought it was maybe STTY settings, and it's mysterious to me because it's not. It doesn't appear to be that. Anyway, um, Let's print some more Mandelbrot set, but now with slightly different coordinates than before. Yeah, it's um, so. I, I moved the uh, 
the computer that this is connected to used to be a Raspberry Pi. And I swapped it out for a, a faster, newer model from Google. And it broke my editor. And I still haven't figured out why. And that was like a month ago. <laughs> it's like trying to debug this combination of old hardware and software that I don't fully understand um, is, is too tricky. Um, so yeah, I do most of my coding just on a laptop and then push it up to the server if it's anything reasonably complicated. The basic program for this is like 25 lines and I did not type it in with the teletype. <laughs> I want a VAX 11 780 in the corner. <laughs> All right, this is looking good though. This is a uh, starting to shade in with some letters at the bottom corner as it calculates through the, the fractal. And what I want to do is keep zooming into that corner of the fractal a little. Because the thing about the fractal is you can zoom literally endlessly. And it just gets wrinklier and wrinklier. So I think we should try it. That's my next step. So that's 70 characters wide and like 30 characters wide. I've got to choose which region I want to zoom in on and try and not end up in somewhere that gives me um, like a blank region. So I can zoom by hand. The other thing is that this basic program does is it doesn't wrap around the count. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's have a look in this in this basic program again. And basically it says Here's the set of characters, and it just loops up to n characters, and then um, prints like whichever it came to. But if I want to add more iterations, then I might need to kind of wrap that around at some point. But for now, I think I'm going to just change the coordinates and zoom in on. So if that piece is, uh, let's see, negative two, that's negative one, negative two, negative one, it's, uh, 43 out of 72. See if I can calculate forty three out of seventy two uh, uh, times two, so that's one point one nine, and then if I go up just a little, 
to uh, actually if I have that and stay down here that's probably close enough guessing So sometimes you really want cursor keys, and of course there are like command, etc., um, escape equivalents that will get you to the cursor keys, um, like to do line up. But you can't really like scroll up through history because it would overprint on your current line. It's like the history is there; it's just Unix, but you can't really scroll through it the way you want. Oh, I know what I did. I didn't really super zoom. I just like, I just chopped the bottom piece. Okay, so I'm like, I zoomed by two uh, some small fraction. So this will be an interesting trackball. At least showing some of the same kind of characteristics. But I think this is the last one on here. Yeah, so other things about editing on it, um, it doesn't have backspace. There's, uh, there's no physical backspace in the mechanism. And so you can kind of simulate backspace by um, rewinding to the start of the line and then counting how many spaces and, and uh, spacing forward. Um, so I've done that in firmware on... Uh, uh, Teamsy microprocessor. Yeah, most typewriters do. Because um, you really want to use them pretty often if you're kind of interactive. Um, yeah, aren't we all? And having a modern kind of keyboard and terminal teaches you to be a really bad typist and sloppy. Oh, a whiteout, you think? Yay! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. It would be nice to implement that on here, but there's no way to do the white outy thing. Um, this doesn't have like one of those split two-level tapes it just, uh, ribbons. It just has like a single level ribbon. Um, it doesn't have like the shifted ribbon thing that you get on a typewriter. And I haven't yet found a, a solid white out typewriter ribbon. No, these are just regular. Totally normal um, typewriter rhythms. I actually bought some new ones that are this, um, which are uh, nice silk ones um, because they print a sharper letter than uh, cotton on cotton or nylon or whatever. But so yeah, I think and yeah, you also realise no, no, not at all, absolutely. Um, the silly thing is like just let's trim the spaces at the end of the line would save so much time <laughs> it would be great if I trimmed the edge of the line because then it would trim faster so that this is a nice picture actually it's like a good fractal edge But this is basic, so yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And actually calculating the whole line and then printing it um, makes sense for multiple reasons. Um, as we're going to see. <laughs> so now, now my next nefarious plan right, is, this is running basically on Raspberry Pi style machine. Here, this is Google's Edge TPU, and then a little serial interface with a bright red, red and yellow lights on it. Um, yeah, yeah. So this is this is my mainframe in, in the in the basement. Um, but what if we do this on an actual old machine?
something is weird there. So, so now I'm going to connect to an actual old machine. And let's see if it works. So, so this is one of the things that kind of uh, like spoils us. Now the world is is in a way monolithic. Um, yeah, I I don't have any old hardware either. I have actual machines. Um, oh, I've got a big trace back. fix that. Um, but there's lots of old machines on, I don't know, 72 lines, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can turn on auto wrap, like, but but that's all in software. It's not in the hardware. If you just let it be, it'll just hammer at the end until it uh, cuts the paper in half and hammering. So, nice short blog messages. <laughs> Let's see if it actually connects to this thing, um, the place that I'm trying to connect to. But of course, there's a risk that it'll hit timeouts and uh, drop the connection just because it's logging too much. Um, oh, come on. Yeah, so anyway, um, Unix, I mean, it's like now that everything's Unix, or not everything, but like nearly. Um, we're kind of spoiled to how not everything used to be Unix. And the HP 2000 is a machine from the mid 60s that is definitely not Unix. Um, and this is not a physical machine. This is an emulation, as far as I know. Um, of a HP 2000 machine. No, no, this is on the internet. It's, um, it's at hp2000.brighton.ac.uk or something. Anyway, it's, it's on the internet. Um, yeah, this is an emulation. Um, there are some old real machines um, at the Living Computer Museum in Seattle, and we can access some of those too. Um, but I haven't done a real successful connection to their CDC mainframe. Um, oh no, it would be interesting. I don't know if there's any of these actually living in physical hardware still. I mean, these were mid-60s, and that's that's a long time ago now. Um, so yeah, this is a guest account on an emulation on a HP uh, system. And it's totally not Unix, and it's it's way simpler. Like, there's no directory structure. There's no such thing as subdirectories. There's kind of three levels. There's a uh, directory where your files are, and then there's a, a library kind of place where some other files are, and then there's like, if you log in as a, yeah, yeah. If you log in as like an admin, then there's like an admin area. Um, and I cannot remember how to print what files we've got. I don't want to say help because it'll, it'll like run forever. Um, so, where is this? Uh, where is this dock? And can I find the dock? Yes, I can. This is the dock. I'm going to share my browser. So this is the dock on the um, BitSavers site. And it's a guide to timeshared basic, which is what we're looking at here. And um, woo, yeah, 
Um, there may be slow, slow dropouts on my side as well. Um, the streaming machine that I've got is kind of underpowered. But uh, yeah, I can I can see your chat. So yeah, this is Time Shared Basic from the HP 2000. So the the interesting thing about this this machine that we're running is the OS is basic like the basic language. The operating system that we're connected to here is basic. Right, that literally the OS is basic. There's no other thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's kind of like all of the eight bit machines. But this is like the the nineteen sixties version of those things. You boot it up and it's basic. It's also multi user. So you have to log in remotely from a terminal. But then you're in basic and there's no real OS outside it. There is a little bit of an OS. Um, and if I can find it, <laughs> I could just run help. I can't run help. Um, yeah, well, probably. <laughs> There's probably something underneath of it. But, but the whole interface, it's like even um, this login message where it says, welcome to the machine, uh, etc. Um, that is a basic program that runs it. It's, uh, let's find it. I'm slightly lost and I'm Googling on my browser <laughs> uh, to see where's the... Um, which of these docs? <laughs> which of these? I think the user manual, probably this one. Like, it's great that we have really good doc for this thing. And there's, there's like machine internals documents. So we could go find out what the kernel looks like, um, but it's a it's a multi-user machine, and these are dated '72 actually, and that other doc was dated '79, uh, no '69, uh, so it's later than I thought. Um, yeah, this is the same doc. Oh well, operands, stopping a program. The essentials are basic, I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, save, get, name, append, catalog. What's happening? Oh no. Oh no, don't let me hang up. Python trace back um, I think I can probably fix that trace back. Let's try it. Just by turning off logging on the on the expect script. Yeah, better. Much better. And 
we're in. ESP8266 that emulates a modem, like an actual telephone line modem. This is, these are what, these are the things that run like um, Zigbee style, I don't know, little IoT things. I've heard of that chip, but I know nothing about them. Ah, oh, I see. Tiny microcontroller with Wi-Fi. Cool. There we are. The equivalent of LS is CAT. Ah. Now that's an interesting proposition. Yeah, so um, I did a catalog, and this is a file listing of what's here. And, um, and so you say get dash, and then the file name, and it, and it picks it up, it reads it, and then list. This is basic, right? It's just, like you say, it's like a C64 or something. So this is the thing that says, like, welcome to the system. And it's what you would use in, in Unix land, you'd use batch. But it's like there is no, there's nothing else except the shell, and the shell is basic. But it doesn't start up and say, welcome, you've got 19,000 bytes free. <laughs> I don't know how much memory this has. Uh, but I think plenty, enough to get on with. Um, so, yeah. Um, so this has an editor built in. We're actually going to try using because the editor is like the OS. It's like the OS is basic, and the editor is part of it. So. Yeah. Here's this program that I wrote earlier. Yeah, absolutely. The hardware would have core. Yeah, but this is emulated, so it's probably it's probably SSD and RAM. Um, what I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to list this with the pump tape on because um, I, I, I need a tape. Of this. And The mechanism, but the mechanism underneath has these punches. Yeah. But this is the same. This is the same Mandelbrot app. We ran on the local machine. Release. Forwards. Turn it off. Now we have a basic listing on tape. And that tape is going to be useful because I want to load this program into another computer. Uh, ideally, I think this CVC. 
and I don't want to type it uh, type it in. On this one I copied and pasted from a shell terminal. Right, absolutely. This tape is the source code backup now. And it's really just it's a printout of the listing. <laughs> it's like it's the source code, that's all. But then I can read it into another session when I'm connected to a different computer and at the wonderful speed of 10 bytes per second, I will move my um, my program onto the new machine. That's the theory. It used to work that way. Let's hope it does work that way in the current day. Anyway. We should run this thing. Yes, it's working. Yeah, 110 board. Or 10 bytes per inch. So 1K is like 100 inches. And that's like 3 feet. You know, uh, my math is all screwed. That's like 8 feet. Yes, the bell is like a typewriter. To be honest, I don't know why it really has a bell. I mean, it's kind of silly. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's a hangover from typewriters. But I don't know. Maybe it is useful if you're entering lots of stuff. Um, if you're actually typing a big program at the time. Yeah, so I have this running now on two computers. One is my local Raspberry Pi, my local host. And then this is an HP 2000 in Brighton. <laughs> and then the third one that I tried, which I'm going to do later. Uh, well, when you're doing input, you'll want to know if you're entering it. Yeah, I guess. I mean, sure. Um, yeah, exactly. Editing is laborious. Data entry is a little bit laborious. There's no copy and paste. Hey! <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for dropping in. Um, it's kind of late where you are, isn't it, I guess? No, it's evening anyway. Welcome. Um, yeah, that's, this is the great thing about these emulations that I'm running is, like, the computer that's actually charging it is much faster <laughs> than the uh, 8080-based machine. Um, So yeah, um, so this, Dave, to catch you up, this is running on a uh, HP 2000 emulation at Brighton Polytechnic. So Brighton Poly, one of the, I, I assume it's actually at Brighton Poly, but there's a HP 2000 in emulation that you can tell that to, and that's what we're connected to here. Copy and paste. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I I copy and pasted through a shell. Uh, I copied this file earlier to, to get the um, to get the basic program in. But the interesting thing with the HP two thousand is that the OS is basic. So it's it's like one of the eighties eight bit machines in that sense. It's it's like a a Spectrum or a BBC machine or a C64 that you boot it up and it's running basic. But at the same time, it, it kind of feels like it's a late 60s mini. Like you connect to it with a, this is a, a absolutely age appropriate hardware. 
to connect to it. So, um, yeah. Um, if I go. Um, remember how to do the editor. I've been switching between too many editors here. Yeah, I want to write like a mobile app that reads paper tape one of these days. But that's like never going to happen because it's too much work. <laughs> Clearly a lot of work. Um, now I think I have to go um, switch to my browser and figure out like how do I edit? Because I remember had a list and I don't need file access but this is actually not the doc that I was looking for I think um, maybe it tells us enough it tells us a little about basic and it tells you you just type it and you do you just type it and then you say run but um, then you've got to finish with end. This is great. Okay. Make sure that I'm... Yeah, okay. Yeah, you just enter the lines. You just say 10, print, whatever, right? But then if you want to go back and edit them... Oh, I know what you do. You just rewrite them. <laughs> it's like literally... It's, the OS is basic. So I want to rewrite line 40 and say I1 equals, no, I want to say line 50, line 2 equals 0. So I think that do the no no I think you just retype it. Um, there is a backspace, but the backspace is actually the underscore or the back arrow character. Now this list ten to fifty obviously didn't do the right thing, but my edits are in place. They're actually directly where they where they should have been. So it says you can delete while you're typing just with Control X, and you can say list and it will line feed. List dash and a statement number says it's going to begin at that statement. So my list 10-50 actually just thought it it was going to list. Well, it started where I thought it was going to end, and then it didn't end further than that. And I think that's actually the whole list statement is it just says list dash 30 in the example will list to begin at the statement you specified. And that's annoying because you can't like list up to <laughs> a particular statement. It's not really a good editor. <laughs> like ed ed is like miles and miles and miles ahead of this thing. But then this was like just a mini, right? It's a mini for schools. Maybe, yeah. Um, but it doesn't say so in the dark. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's figure out somewhere else on the uh, on the on the Mandelbrot set to go. Um, uh, 
so on the other one, I went to uh, coordinates of um, minus 0 0.8 to 0 and minus 1.19 to 0. Um, yeah, it is, is actually really good. It's still good, despite the hardware that it was meant for is obsolete. It's still a great editor. So yeah, if I go minus, so that printed, this is the whole thing. This one here, printed out quite nicely. Uh, with a, if I could even zoom in on this area at the bottom of the, uh, at the bottom, of, bottom of the point, if I go, Let me write this down in pencil somewhere. And of course, the only pens I have handy are um, HP plotter pens. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to scribble down some coordinates and see if that works. I'm going to go from minus 0 0.3 vertical to 0. And horizontal, I'm going to go minus 1.0 to minus 0 0.5. I think that's my So let's try that. Yeah. Let's see Well, already it looks like we're in an interesting zone. We've hit uh, some blank and some non-blank, and so we're in fractal place. This is so much fun. <laughs> it's really nice. And it looks like just random nonsense until until the end of the print when you'll find that it's like it's a, a section of a fractal. And it's beautiful. <laughs> but I should have done the thing like you were saying, Uzi Monkey, that I should have uh, printed it to a string and then trimmed the string before printing it. <laughs> Do I have any good books from the 60s and 70s? I don't. There's a basic book that I learned on in about 1979 that if I could find it again, I would love to get a copy. And it had like a black cover with green text on it. And it was really short. And I learned basic by reading it and then practiced by writing it out by hand because I didn't have a computer to work on. <laughs> but no, the the... The book that I do have from the era, um, I'll show you, uh, because of course I have the technical manuals for the teletype, and um, so there's like a parts manual, uh, there's a uh, lubrication and operation Oops. Chug, chug, chug. So yeah, the uh, the dock for this is really amazing. Um, it's super deep. Dock. 
there are four books and they're all like that. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much the only doc that I have. The only old books. PDP-11 Assembly. Yeah. I mean, I've used a, a, a Vax as an end user, but I've never used a PDP-11. And uh, I, I have no idea what the assembly would be like, but of course, it's probably really clean and nice and simple and understandable. I have. Well, this is just, I think this is the little section between the main bulb on the right and the uh, main second bulb on the, on the left. I think this is just like zoomed in a tiny bit. We're not super zoomed. But the thing that I'm, I'm fairly pleased with this little listing. This, this strategy of like, let's take, um, let's take some characters and order them by depth, by, by grayness and use that. Yeah, yeah, I know we are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cheap books can't be a bad thing. <laughs> I do that with, like, books. Not even technical books, just books. So, yeah, that's the HP one, uh, HP 2000. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the next place, I think, uh, which is... Um, so, yeah, if, if you end up logging into this machine... Um, um, then you'll... You should. I, I, I assume that these things persist and they just clean out every so often. But this um, this Mandelbrot program is here, and if you just say catalog after you log in, then you say get dash Mandel, and um, and there it is. Um, There we are. Graphics programming gems. I love the the kind of um, late eighties, early nineties kind of stuff um, of like programming books that are just completely obsolete because they're talking about like tiny low res graphics stuff. It's like at least in the really old stuff, you get things that are still true in some ways. I don't know. Anyway, there's that kind of eighties. Thing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but there's so much like stuff that we've forgotten. And one of the nice things about this machine is um, um, that it it's like something we've forgotten. It's like a it's a, a, a machine that runs basic as its native thing. Uh, yeah. Um, Okay, so we can't see the uh, we can't see the whole host name here. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah, and my my bashness is still I do like stupid things. It's like that was completely the longest way of <laughs> just regretting it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the name ran on to the end of the the thing, so. Um, Uh, I guess the easiest way is to <laughs> is to go on the web because <laughs> um, all of this is up on GitHub. It, 
it's down under bin uh, HP2000. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to do kind of pipe from cat. But but the reason that I kind of went into that angle bracket bracket cat thing is um, because I've trained myself a little bit. There's no pipe character on the keyboard, so I can't um, I can't do like cat thingy pipe grep the way I normally would. So anyway, yeah. So there it is. It's just HP two thousand. Uh, dot Brighton dot ac dot uk. Oh yeah, there's no um, backtick either. Um, that character didn't exist yet. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, HP two thousand. You can just tell it there. Um, you have to uh, say hello dash t double one HP two thousand. So look at that expect strips. That tells you where to go. Um, yeah, and the, then the other stuff in this directory, um, I'm going to check in my changes to that script, actually. Um, Dash Q. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the other one that is worth connecting to, that I thought was worth connecting to, is the prime. Because uh, when I was in high school, the prime is the first machine that I used with this teletype. And so I think we should go there as well. And again, this is running in emulation, and I skipped with the expect script. I skipped all the login message. Now, Primos has—it's like super modern compared with the HP 2000. It's like a—it's a, it's, a—it's a real modern 90s OS kind of thing. It's like—it um, has the best shell scripting language in the universe, CPL. Um, and it does everything you'd expect a modern computer to do, but it dates to like the 80s. Um, can I remember how to do a directory listing? LD? Yeah. There we are. So we're a guest with all access. Oh, there's lots of records. Now, records means, I don't know. I can't remember the difference between records and files. Um, but there's lots of stuff here. So this listing, CPL is the uh, Primos uh, uh, shell language, shell script. Oh no! Seriously, actually, actually, seriously, it's it's uh, it's better than Bash. Um, it's seriously, it's CPL is a good scripting language. Um, it has nicer handling of variables and loops and tests than than any of the Unix shell scripts that I know. Um, and yeah, and it has, um, and Primos has like a real directory structure, and late versions of it have lots of access control stuff, and it's like a real thing. Um, now, I think the Mandel thing that I created here is completely empty because I created myself a subdirectory. Yeah, 
so this this emulation has been running for a while. Um, again, it's not physical hardware. It's as far as I know. Uh, and the emulator is unfortunately not open source. Um, so there's only just one instance, and I worry what happens if the maintainer stops maintaining it. Um, so yeah, S list is, is the same as cat. Oh, okay. So yeah, then then like. Uh, this is not really my Mandel program, but I want to actually try this as a um, So yeah, this editor has like two modes, and um, yeah, more is essential. Um, so this editor has two, it's the, the, the equivalent of ED for Unix, but it's on um, on Primos. It has two modes that you just switch between by pressing character turn, and it has an input mode, which I'm in right now, and then it has an edit mode where you have some commands. So input mode, you're just like, typing stuff. And then pprint prints a little bit before and a little after where your current cursor is. And there it is. Errors. <laughs> what kind of errors have we got here? I know what kind of errors we got. <laughs> thanks, Susie Monkey. Thanks for hanging out. This is really cool. Um, there's errors. I know what the errors are. I don't know what's up. I don't know what's wrong with my program. Oh well. So let's change into a subdirectory. So attach is like 
the equivalent of CD. Um, and so now you can see I'm in user 192, then guest, then queue, and I'm in a subdirectory. Now this is the real Mandelbrot file. And it's the same code. But this is actually, this is not going to work very well yet. Um, and the reason that it's not going to work well is, um, first of all, I had all sorts of problems getting through the um, syntax errors. And there was a syntax error that was related to those single quotes versus double quotes that, that on the prime basic, it doesn't like double quotes for strings, it needs single quotes. Uh, and then the other thing is the print statement is a bit weird. And I think this is really because because um, it's kind of a serious, uh, businessy, kind of scientific y kind of OS. Um, and so where it says line 240, print sub c dollar n, comma 1, now that would be print mid dollar on other basics. It's like print the substring. Um, and then there's a colon at the end, and the colon is like a formatting specifier. Um, let me show you on the browser. These are from BitSavers, um, from the prime area on BitSavers. And you can do format with print using um, but it seems that you can't print like characters immediately one after the other. Look at this example here. It says print x4 colon feet, and it prints this number and then a space, and then feet. Um, so the colon separator uh, is not the default, which is comma, which is like print zoned with a bunch of tab stops between them but the colon separator prints whatever it is and then a space. And that's not what I wanted. So I think I have to go back on this one and actually do the strategy we were talking about earlier of construct a string and add to the end of it as we, as we go and then print the whole string at the end. Um, because I don't think there's actually a way to in Primos basic, in prime basic, to, to print one character and nothing separating from the next thing. So, but I'm going to stop here, because <laughs> it's five o'clock. How did that happen? <laughs> I'm not going to debug this for the next two hours. I'm going to go home and get some entertainment. <laughs> All right, um, so we've successfully, on two distinct old platforms, printed Mandelbrot set, and um, we've got halfway to doing another one. So I'm very pleased. <laughs> I've joined the club of the Fractal Geeks, which is incredibly fun. Um, thanks for hanging out. I'll catch you again sometime soon. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Dave. See ya. <laughs>